morning. Today we're going to go over some of the parts which help keep your car running, help your engine to run. Um, I'll show you what's under the hood. In case you're a new driver, just got your car and would like to know more about it, or maybe you've been driving for a while and just never had the desire to look under the hood or to uh, understand how things work, this video will help you to do that. So, I'll go through the things that I know. I don't know everything. Um, but hopefully this video can give you an idea of what it looks like under a hood and what the parts are. So let's get started. <laughs> the car we'll be working on is this lovely Honda Civic 1995. I know most of you probably have a newer car than this, so the components may be a little different. Um, a lot of times the new cars have a cover over the engine, and so when you open up the hood, you're like, oh no, I can't see anything. This is way too difficult for me. But once you unscrew that and take it off, it's it's pretty much the same. You know, the engines haven't, the motors haven't changed much. You know, they've added more electrical parts and safety things to get things better, make better gas mileage, make it safer, make it run more efficiently. This car runs. It's a great little car. We did a lot of work on it. We'll use this one to show you some stuff. <laughs> So first inside, so right here under the dash, there's a bunch of wires coming out, but see that dark gray and light gray and reddish brown piece of plastic there, that's the main relay. Sometimes it's tucked more up in there, you see that's right there by there's the brake, gas pedal, brake, and that's just where you put your foot there. And then there's some wires, so right above that is where the main relay is. And so now let's pop the engine, and I'll show you. Pop the engine, I'm sorry. Let's pop the hood. <laughs> And I'll show you the engine. As you can see in my little picture here, the little car with the hood open, that's the lever you pull. So to open the hood, a little lever in here will lift it to the passenger side and it open. So first I'll show you the battery. This is a 51R series battery. We have the positive and a negative. I have the negative unplugged because uh, the we leave the car sitting and we don't want the battery to run out so it's a good idea to unplug it so it doesn't drain the battery. It, the positive battery cable runs down to the starter. If you could see it down there, it is this with the black goes uh, into the engine and this part over here is hooked to it. You just can't see it because this uh, radiator hose is in the way, but this is the starter solenoid. What happens is when you turn the key, it sends a spark from the battery to the starter solenoid, which has like an electromagnet. It closes, it makes the current, sends, sends the current to the starter, which in turn sends a little uh, gear out into the flywheel, turns the engine, and starts it. And 
And so over here next to the battery is the fuse box. There's fuses and relays in here. You can see a map on the front that shows what everything does and which fuses belong in there. There's also a fuse compartment inside of the vehicle. Moving on, we have, this is where the air filter goes. We have screws. Sometimes air filter boxes have just little clips that you can undo and pop the top off here. There's an air filter inside. The cold air intake hose to the MAP sensor. MAP stands for Manifold Air Pressure and it makes sure the engine is, has the right pressure in it. This is the throttle body. See, there's the throttle. Pull this, see this cable goes, it runs down. Runs along here. Runs along here and into, see how it goes into the firewall there? It goes down to the throttle that you push with your foot. And so when you push with your foot, it pulls this cable, pulls the throttle, speeds up the engine. And then there's the fuel filter. Sometimes if your engine's not getting fuel to it, it could have a clogged up fuel filter. There's also a little copper compression washer that um, is in the, under this banjo bolt that could leak if it's not tightened correctly. Over here is the brake master cylinder and the, the black part behind it is the brake booster. The thing that looks like a cup on top of it, the reservoir for the brake fluid. This is the brake master cylinder. It has brake lines running out of it, which go to the brakes. When you push on the gas, when you push on the brake, it compresses this, pushes the hydraulic fluid down the tubes and causes the brake calipers to close to cause the brake pads to grip the rotor and stop your car. This is a four cylinder engine. You can tell because there's four spark plugs. These are the wires. And each of these goes down and connects to the top of a spark plug. So when you change your spark plugs, you will just pull this off, use a spark plug socket has a magnet on it, so once you loosen it, it'll pull it out to the tube. This is where you add your oil. You just, you should check with your book to find how much oil you need and the type you need. Sometimes it's written on the cap, but I don't see anything written on this. But down in there, I don't know if you can see or not, but that's the top of the engine with the rocker arms. And this is where you check your oil. You should not do this at night. It's a little piece of advice I can tell you because it's really hard to see that hole. I learned the hard way, <laughs> but the the oil should be between, should be above the top hole. If it's below it, you should add some. Make sure it's pushed all the way down in there so no oil leaks out when your engine's running and causes smoke. Over here, if you can see down in the back, is a yellow. This is a dipstick as well, but it's for the transmission fluid. And this is the transmission here. Well, this whole thing, it bolts into the engine. And this, let me see if I could see where the transmission mount is. This is what holds the transmission in the car. This is the engine and this is the engine mount. 
over here on this side of the engine is the timing cover. This is also where your water pump is. So if your water pump goes out, you would have to jack up your engine. You would have to remove this motor mount, lift up your engine so you can remove this cover and change your water pump. It's a big job if you have to reset your timing. So you have to be really careful with that. So over here, if your water pump is out, when your engine gets up to temperature, you, you should be able to feel water flowing through this, feel coolant flowing through this. And if you don't, it could be a sign that you have a bad water pump. This is your rubber radiator hose. It goes into your radiator. Look at how small this little radiator is. <laughs> but this is where you add your coolant. Just check with your owner's manual. Find out which kind you need. You should add half coolant, antifreeze, and half water, distilled water. You should use distilled water because it builds up. If you, water out of your faucet has minerals in it. And these minerals over time can build up in your engine and in your radiator and clog things up. So you should always use distilled water. A good idea is just to buy the 50-50 antifreeze, which is half antifreeze and half water. So you pour it directly in here. But if you're doing a big job, you can buy the full strength, add distilled water. It ends up being a little cheaper that way. This is just the overflow where the extra... Um, coolant goes because water coolant expands when it gets hot so it has some place to go or you will always need more then and so it flows in it sucks out it's just a complete system to keep your car cool these hoses here are for your air conditioner down here is the compressor where the hose is hooked to. If you can see that this right here, all of this is the AC compressor. It has a belt, it turns the compressor, pumps the R134A coolant through these tubes into the condenser. Condenser looks a lot like a radiator. I don't know if you can see it down there. This is the condenser fan. There's a high and a low port. The high pressure is a smaller hose. Low pressure is the larger hose. This is where you would add your coolant, your R134A, the refrigerant. If you needed to add some, you would add it to the low side. So, over here, this is your power steering pump. And this is where you would add your power steering fluid. It's run by a belt as well. Down here is your alternator. I don't know if you could see it down here. And this is the alternator, has a belt. It's turned by the engine creates electrical current that runs your electrical systems and your car. It also keeps your battery charged. So when you go to crank your car, it sends the electric out to your starter. This is where you add, add your washer fluid. And one little thing I learned is don't use this when you're driving down the road and the sun is shining right in your window straight at you like if you're driving east in the morning you see all the debris on your window it shows up really good and you go to wash it and the water in the sun and it blinds you it's <laughs> scary and dangerous so make sure you're in the shade when you turn on your washer wipers also i'll show you where your thermostat is different in different cars but in this one your thermostat is over here 
This is your lower radiator hose. Runs over here. Let me see the relationship between things. There's the battery, fuel filter. There it is down there. So there's two bolts, one on that side. Let me see. Right here, right here, and right here. And you take those off. This will come off and see where that crack, that line is. That's where it separates and your thermostat is right in there. So this right here is your coolant temperature sensor. You can unbolt that and uh, you take the clip off, unbolt that and uh, bolt the new one in there. You just turn it in and then plug it back up. That's all there is to that. All right. So there we've seen some stuff. I hope that helps a little bit. There is a lot more to an engine than what I've showed you. It's, I've just shown you some of the basic things that I know. And um, maybe I'll make another video with some more parts and some of the components. But for now, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> Remember to uh, hit that subscribe button if you want notifications. There's a little bell up there you could hit. And uh, every time I post a new video, you'll, you'll know it's there. And uh, take care. Have a great day. And remember, if I can do it, so can you. Bye-bye.